Hi, my name is Brandon, and today I'm going to talk about container image trust, namely container image signing and encryption capabilities when it comes to the distribution of images. So in a normal scenario of a container image lifecycle, uh, we have three stages. We have the build, the distribute, and the run. So starting on the left-hand side is where we build our containers. So this can be on a developer's computer. Uh, it could be on a CI/CD pipeline like Tekton or Jenkins. And what eventually comes out of this stage is a container image. And so the natural next um, step is to take this image and distribute it. And this is done by uploading it to a registry or multiple registries. And finally, um, all images eventually will want to be run. And so at the run stage of this uh, image is downloaded, unpacked and run by a runtime, um, be it Docker, Podman, uh, Kubernetes runtimes like ContainerD and Cryo. So let's take a look at the distribution part of this ecosystem uh, and lifecycle. So more often than not, we want to make our image, images accessible. So this means uploading it to commonly used registries such as Docker Hub and you know, possibly registries across different geographical locations. So now that we have an image in multiple registries, the question is what if one of the registries is compromised or perhaps untrusted? Um, so in this case, an uh, example like that I like to go back to is on the case of Docker Hub a while back where it was hacked and um, user information was leaked and this meant that certain um, images were compromised. All right. So the question is, how do we guarantee trust and security properties of container images? All right. Uh, this is the main scenario that we will be talking about. Uh, but in addition to that, we can also approach this from a compliance perspective. Uh, for example, how do I show compliance and auditing for registries that I don't even own? So let's start with what are the properties that we want out of a container image. Um, so first of all, we want integrity. You know, how do I know my images have not been tampered with? Um, and second, we want confidentiality which is how do I know whether my, the content of my image has not been accessed by an unauthorized personnel. All right. And in order to solve these problems, we actually don't have to look too far. These are very classical security problems uh, and cryptography has proven to be a good answer to some of these problems. And so for container images, we've taken a similar approach where first to um, enter integrity, uh, we cryptographically sign container images and verify them in the runtime. And to ensure confidentiality, we can do encryption of the images and then decrypt them at runtime. So what this essentially is doing is creating a cryptographic binding between build and runtime. Right. Distribution then becomes this black box uh, that we can just rely on without worrying too much about the security of the registries. Uh, and you can kind of relate this to how you would use something like VPN or SSH tunnel over an untrusted network. So in this case, um, when we are building the image, we sign and encrypt the image, container images, and then during the runtime, we verify and decrypt them. And therefore, um, we ensure the security of the images uh, through this cryptographic binding. So let's talk a little bit more about uh, specific technology starting with image signing. So in image signing, what uh, we're really out to do is to ensure that um, the image has not been tampered with from build to runtime. And so how this is done is by taking uh, the manifesto image. So over here is an example of uh, what the OCI image manifest may look like. And by taking the hash of the manifest, and then using a private key to cryptographically sign it, we end up with a signature. And what happens on the runtime is that the runtime downloads the image from the registry and it checks that the hash of the manifest that it downloads is the same as the hash within the signature that was cryptographically signed and verified. 
So only if the hash is matched will it proceed to then go ahead and run the image. So signing technologies today most commonly is Docker Content Trust and Red Hat Simple Signing. Uh, they both do uh, basically do very similar things. Uh, they only have different protocols and different design decisions. So relevant projects for this on the signing side, um, Scorpio Builder uh, for Red Hat Simple Signing, um, BuildKit and Notary uh, relevant for Docker Content Trust. And for verification, there's Poteris, which is a Kubernetes admission control uh, for IBM. Uh, we have the Cryo runtime on uh, Podman, as well as the Docker daemon. Next up, we have image encryption. Um, so image encryption is based on the OCI image spec. Um, so very similar blob we have here, the OCI image manifest. Um, but what's happening here is we want to be able to protect the content of the image. So um, what we're doing is we're taking the layers of an image, which traditionally are just tarballs or files that represent the layers. And we're going through an additional um, step by encrypting these layers with a key. So what happens is the the image layer blobs um, that make up the layers are now encrypted and they can only be decrypted if the appropriate key is present um, during the runtime. So this way after the image is built, uh, even if the registry is compromised, the image is still encrypted. So relevant projects for this is the Container D runtime, Cryo runtime, and uh, for encrypting images, we have Builder and Scorpio. So to end off, I'd like to talk a bit about the compliance perspective and how image signing and encryption can be used um, to provide governance of container workloads. Uh, and so we've been talking about uh, the build stage and the run stage. Uh, and we're going to see how if you have a more complex environment, such as multiple DevOps pipeline with different requirements and runtimes in different regions and different um, compliance requirements uh, that you can create governance um, through signing and encryption. Uh, so the first example here is we want to be able to make the statement such as, for example, if a EU cluster should only run GDPR approved applications. Um, so the way we can achieve this is we can imagine on the build side, we have multiple pipelines. So we have two pipelines here that do GDPR checks and then builds the container image and signs it. Uh, and then we have another application which is not related to GDPR, which is a US government application. Um, so by configuring the GDPR pipelines to sign an image with the GDPR key at the end of the pipeline uh, and configuring uh, the EU cluster to say that it should only run images signed by this particular key, uh, we can create this policy. And another example is if we want to make a statement such as uh, government applications could only run in on FedRAM clusters. Uh, FedRAM is a, a US cloud certification for government agencies. And so the idea here is that if we had a government application with it, which was sensitive or had certain export control requirements where it couldn't, it shouldn't be able to run on clusters which are not FedRAM certified, uh, we can encrypt the container image with the FedRAM key. And by making only the FedRAM key accessible to FedRAM clusters, uh, we ensure that the image uh, will not be able to be run on the EU cluster, for example. And so by taking a combination of these, you know, we can kind of combine these policies together and create governance over the container workload. And so this is just one example of um, how signing and encryption can be used to provide um, more interesting governance and compliance constructs. And so I'd be curious to see, you know, what's, what are some other requirements in terms of compliance, what are people thinking about uh, regarding governance of their container workloads. Thank you.